Hi and welcome. In our previous tutorial, we learned what the factory pattern is and we learned about the bean factory of uh, spring. In this tutorial, we're going to go hands on. We're going to write code which uses the bean factory to instantiate the objects that we want. So first, let me start off with uh, writing a class with the main method that kicks off the execution of our application. So I will create a package and a main class. I'll call this the drawing application and I need a main method. In this drawing application, I will be drawing some shapes. So first let me create a triangle shape. Create a new class, call this triangle. I don't need a main method for this one. This triangle, very simple as of now, we'll just have a public void draw. Okay, it just prints out that a triangle has been drawn. Let's save this. Now in my drawing application, first what I'll do is I'll not use the bean factory, I'll just say uh, triangle equals new triangle. I'm gonna use the new and I will instantiate it just I was just as if I would use it without using spring. So if I say triangle.draw, it's gonna draw, it's gonna print that statement which draws the triangle. There you go, it draws the triangle. But here we're not using spring, so let's use spring now. In order to use spring, um, I will comment this out. See, now we will not be using a new command here. We're not gonna instantiate the triangle object ourselves. We'll ask the bean factory to do it. So I uh, let me instantiate the bean factory first. Let's see. Bean factory equals new. Okay, I need to provide an implementation of the bean factory. There are different bean factory uh, classes available. The bean factory is the interface and there are different implementation classes. I will use the XML bean factory. And the use of the XML bean factory is that it'll it'll configure the bean factory using an XML file. Earlier I told you that the bean factory reads the blueprints of the beans from a configuration file. I plan to use an XML file in this example to provide the configuration to Spring. So in order to read that XML file, the bean factory has to be an XML bean factory. So the XML bean factory reads an XML file. So I'll create an instance of the XML bean factory. So there are different types of bean factories depending on how you specify the configuration. You can uh, use the corresponding bean factory. Since I happen to be using an XML file in this tutorial, I will use the XML bean factory here. So the XML bean factory takes in an argument which is the actual resource where I have my XML. So I'll create a new file system resource. And this file system resource will be, uh, let me call it spring.xml. Have to do the imports here. I will import XML bean factory from org.springframework.beans.factory.xml. So this is the class that I'll be importing. And the file system resource is again a spring object. It's spring framework core.io. And the bean factory is from spring frameworks bean factory. Okay, I have all the imports in place. Now I have my bean factory here. Now this bean factory reads from an XML file. We need to provide this XML file. So let me just go here and right click, create new XML file. Let's say other, let's 
scroll all the way down till you see this XML node here. And I'll create a new XML file. Press next. We'll call this spring.xml. Since this is the name that I've given there. And I'll say finish. Okay, let me go to the source. This is a blank XML file. Now in this XML, I need to provide the blueprint for the bean that I need to instantiate from this drawing app. So I need to tell Spring saying, hey, I need a triangle object and it, it has to be instantiated. So here what I'm gonna do is first I need to have uh, the doc type line here. In order to get the doc type line, what you can do is head over to uh, the Spring jar that you've downloaded. Here you have a projects folder. So inside this projects folder, you can search for this XML. I will search for application context.xml. Here you get a lot of uh, sample XMLs that we can use. I'm just gonna pick one and I'm gonna copy this doc type line. In fact, let me copy these two. Okay, so now I have the doc type here, so we know that uh, this has uh, this is a spring XML. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna define all the beans that we want. I'll have a beans node, and inside this beans node, I can define as many number of beans as I want. I just want one bean in this case, which is a triangle. So I'll say bean ID equals triangle. I need to give an ID for my bean. And uh, let me come to the reason why in a minute. So the other other thing that I need to provide is a class. Class equals org dot kaushik dot java brains dot triangle. I'll type over here. Okay, so this is all it takes. So now what have I provided here? I have provided two values. One is the ID of the bean, and the other is the class of the bean. The class of the bean we have to provide, it's obvious, because the Spring Factory needs to know which class it needs to instantiate the object from. But what is this ID here? The ID is the reference to this particular bean. Every bean will have an ID. So what's gonna happen is now when I save this, in my application, in any you know, class in this uh, Spring application, I can instantiate a new bean factory and say, hey, bean factory, give me the bean triangle. And then what the bean factory is gonna go, do is it's gonna go to the Spring XML and it's gonna look for a bean definition with the ID triangle. And uh, it's gonna instantiate the corresponding class. So what's gonna happen here is now I need to say, Bean factory, get me the bean triangle. So what I need to do is I need to say factory dot, there is a method called get bean. And then this takes a string argument in which I pass the ID of the bean that I have configured here. So I can have any number of beans over here. So depending on the ID, I can tell the factory what exactly is the bean that it needs to get. So now that this factory, you know, factory.getBean is gonna get me the, the object. So I need to have an instance which will catch this object. So I'll say triangle, triangle equals. Now since it's an object, I need to cast it. So the object that the factory.getBean is retrieving for me is cast into a triangle object and then I assign it to my local triangle variable. And then now I do a triangle dot draw for this local variable. So note that I'm not doing a new triangle. That's what I did earlier. Now I'm not doing that. Now what I'm doing is I'm asking the bean factory to get me a bean. So since this is a object that's uh, created by Spring, this will be inside the Spring container. But I have a reference to this object, which is inside the Spring container, and I'm calling a method of that object. So let's run this and see how this works. There you go, you get a triangle run message. So it's run, 
the draw method of this object that's inside the spring container. Now you might be wondering why are we doing all this? You know, uh, instead of having a new, instead of using just one line of code, why are we performing this circus act of getting this object from Spring? Now the uh, the advantage is not obvious in this case because Triangle is a very simple class. It does not and really has nothing except for this method. But the point here is that what I'm providing here is a blueprint for the object. So. The more complex the object becomes, the more detailed the blueprint becomes, and the more advantage you see in this whole uh, method of getting the object from Spring. So you can have a very complicated object and you can instantiate the object completely just by defining the whole thing inside the Spring.xml. And once you define it in one place, it can be instantiated in as many classes as you want. And then when you make a call, the object that you get is going to be perfectly as per your specification, depending on what you have defined in this spring.xml. So again, since it's a very simple class, the uh, the advantage is not obvious, but uh, you will see how this helps in the subsequent tutorials.